News Live at 10 is Miss Mississippi. Laura Lee Lewis. How Miss Mississippi did at the Miss America pageant. Our Megan West is live in Atlantic City with reaction. Remembering 9-11, how Mississippians and people across the country are marking the 15-year anniversary. Plus, the Blitz 16 Player of the Week nominees are in. We'll tell you who's in the running. Good Sunday evening, I'm meteorologist Nathan Scott, and we've been dealing with a good amount of showers and thunderstorms out there for today. Here are the rainfall totals, especially to the south, where you see the yellows showing up and even a few oranges. There's a rainfall totals two, three, maybe as much as four inches in some locations. They did have some flash flood warnings that were issued for some locations. And now that for tonight, things have quieted down. Let you know more showers and storms are expected on our Monday coming up. Jen Ride, Miss Mississippi makes it into the finals. Good evening, I'm Scott Simmons. 16 WAPT's Megan West is in Atlantic City. She's been following Laura Lee Lewis on her journey. Megan, take it away. Well, Scott, can you see the chills on my arms? I have them, and I've had them for about two hours now. Electric inside boardwalk hall. We raced out here to be live at the top of our show. These folks are just coming out of the announcement of Miss Arkansas as the new Miss America. But our own Miss Mississippi, Laura Lee Lewis, fourth runner up to Miss America. Incredible. I got to tell you, we all had a bit of a heart attack while we were waiting for the announcement of the top 15 and hearing her called very last. Take a look. And your final contestant moving forward in the competition as part of the top 15 is Miss Mississippi. Yes! The crowd went wild. We went wild in the press section. Couldn't even contain ourselves. But I got to tell you, there was nobody more excited in that building than her parents, Mark and Lauren Lewis. They were in a special section where the parents of the 52 contestants stand. Our photographer, Lamont Brown, was watching them closely. Take a look at how they reacted. Next up, enjoy the towns of Miss Mississippi. I grew up with my mom being my voice teacher, and sometimes it can be a really bad thing. I would be singing, I'd hear my mom in the corner going, oh, make sure you have a round tone there. I'm like, mom, I'm in the shower. The more I live, the more I learn, the more I learn, the more I realize, the less I know each singing Piece of Sky on the Miss America stage. Guys, we talked to Laura Lee two weeks ago before she left for the pageant, and she says that was her biggest dream, to be up on stage at Miss America singing. She got to do it and sitting with the crowd. I can tell you, folks who had never met her before were saying, wow, what a voice. I'm telling you, this has got to be a dream come true. Even though she didn't take home that Miss America crown, her family and Laura Lee celebrating tonight, Scott. Granted, I'm a homer, but I think she crushed it in the talent section, too. She did great, Megan. Okay, hey, we're going to check back with you a little later in the broadcast. You know, Miss America Watch Party just wrapped up in Laura Lee's hometown. We yeah, folks gathering at the Haven Historical Theater in Brookhaven to watch the entire pageant and cheer Laura Lee Lewis on. One local pageant winner says she's so inspired by Laura Lee. It inspires me to absolutely do my best to come to be a role model to all these younger children that look up to me. Yeah, they watched the whole thing. Laura Lee did great again, fourth alternate. Now, to some breaking news tonight. A state trooper fighting for his life after severe weather caused his cruiser to hydroplane and slam into a tree and then a median over in Lincoln County. Get this, two other troopers actually crashed trying to rescue him. MHP says it happened around 3 this afternoon while the officer was headed to another accident. They say officers went searching for that injured trooper after they lost radio contact. One trooper found him unconscious along I-55 in Bogachita. That officer tried to rush him to the hospital, but get this, he also hydroplaned and crashed on the way. Another trooper responding to that second wreck also hydroplaned and crashed. 
the first trooper, though, in critical condition tonight at UMMC. The other two, we are told, are not injured. Authorities say flash flooding caused all three wrecks. Now let's go over to Nathan with our weather first. Take that back. We're going to keep on moving. Today marks 15 years since the September 11 terror attacks that killed thousands of people. From the White House to Wall Street, a nation gathering to mourn, remember, and heal. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports. Today, from the raw, emotional images seared into the collective memory, to the faces and stories of the 2,996 lives lost. This morning, a somber reflection on all of the heartbreak and horror of 15 years ago today. The impact of the September 11th terror attack still piercing through the haunting recollections. As we crawled in deeper, squeezing through tiny openings, we came to the understanding that we were going to die in that pile. And lingering effects, 127 New York City firefighters who stayed at ground zero in the days and weeks that followed the attacks, searching heroically through the smoldering toxic debris, have since died of respiratory and other ailments. Nagging problems worsened, chronic became acute, and the number of those lost to the terrorist attack of September 11th began to grow. 17 new names added to the FDNY's memorial wall this year, while again the other names etched into history are read aloud. Paul Vincent Barbaro. James William Barbella. From Victor here below Daniel the resilient Barbosa. reflection of the new One World Trade Center to the Pentagon and the field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, mourning families and our country, honoring that vow made 15 years ago to never forget. And as those families gather here this morning to pay tribute, the NYPD says its officers are on high alert, though the FBI says there are no specific or credible threats. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, New York. No, we'll never forget. In fact, let's take a live look at a New York City right now. I don't know if you can see on the left side of your screen here, those two beacons of light, obviously, commemorating where the Twin Towers once stood. Now, 11 victims spread across the country today, including right here in central Mississippi, as 16 WAPT's Alley Ware reports. Some Mississippians say they will be forever changed from what happened on September 11th. 15 years after 9-11, and most people can go right back to where they were and what they felt on that dreadful day. Left a marvel, you know, and I was just, you know, I just... Well, but they felt the heartache that spread across the country. And the kind of, the level of hatred that people have, uh, I've never seen that before. I know the heroism it took for those people, the uh, EMS workers, the police, the fire, it took a, a great amount of heroism to into the, that type of situation, that atmosphere. AMR and Jackson participated in a 60-second moment of silence on the radio at 846 Sunday morning, the minute the first plane went down. The first plane struck one of the World Trade Center towers at 846 AM Eastern Time. Several we spoke to say their lives have changed forever. It made me be a whole lot stronger. It made me, you know, get my life in order. It has changed me because it, it continues to make me think about my job, my profession, why I do this job, and mostly it's to help people. It caused you to have a greater concern and love for people. On Sunday, the flag at WAPT at half-staff. Back in 2013, President Obama ordered all flags to fly at half-staff from sunup to sundown on September 11th in honor of Patriot Day to remember those who were lost on September 11th back in 2001. In Jackson Alley, we're 16 WAPT News. In fact, today, Governor Phil Bryant ordered all U.S. and state flags to be flown at half staff to remember those victims. Dozens of other Mississippians got together at the reservoir and showed their support for the victims as well. They walked and ran along the res and held up flags in remembrance of 9-11. Flags are to be remain at half staff until sunset tomorrow. Caught on camera, we're taking a look at the week's wildest footage from all over the world. The Week in Review is coming up.
But first, Miss Mississippi, fourth runner-up in the Miss America pageant. Here's a live look out from Atlantic City. We have highlights from the pageant next. Good Sunday evening. I'm meteorologist Nathan Scott. And for today, especially down to the south of the metro, we've been dealing with a good number of showers and thunderstorms. All that activity has now quieted down. Just a very slim chance there could be an isolated shower out there for tonight. But take a look at the rainfall totals. You can see where that rain really, the dividing line made its way right across the metro. Heaviest totals took place down to Lincoln County, Franklin County, also around Macomb and Walthall counties. Here's some totals I put on the board there for you. Uh, where you see the yellow, that's about two, three, as much as four inches of rainfall. And that's why they did see some areas of flash flooding, especially into Lincoln County. Some of the storms also had some gusty winds and knocked out some places with some power as well. Over to the maps now. The high four today, we topped out at 90 degrees. The low this morning, 74. And check that out, sunset now occurs 10 minutes after 7 o'clock, and the airport did not see any rainfall. 73, so that's the new low for the day. Humidity 87%. If you did see the rain, got to watch out for some areas of patchy fog for the start of your Monday morning commute. Temperatures across the state into the low 70s, even a 69 in Tupelo. Drier air is trying to work its way in here from the north. And as we take a look at the dew points, keep in mind, lower is better. We've been into the 70s. But you notice the upper 50s and mid 60s trying to creep its way down. So will tonight be the night that we actually might be able to drop down below 70 degrees? It's going to be a close call. Showers and thunderstorms fired up for today because we've got that front draped right across central Mississippi. That front is still going to be around the region as we head into Monday. However, I don't think the shower and thunderstorm will be as much coverage as what we saw out there for today. High pressure stays well to the north of us, taking the cooler and the fall-like conditions into the Ohio Valley and also the Mid-South as well. So forecast on Monday, still with that front, got to be concerned about the potential of you pop showers and thunderstorms with that daytime heating. Otherwise, we'll see a mixture of sun and clouds. And even into Tuesday, still cannot rot. There could be a passing shower or thunderstorm. Forecast for tonight, I'm calling for 70. Folks to the north, though, you will be able to drop down into the upper 60s. Italian County, Holmes County, don't be surprised if you drop down to the mid-60s with an isolated chance of a shower. And then 91 for the high on our Monday mixture of sunny clouds. Still the opportunity of some spotty showers and thunderstorms. So keep that rain here close by. It's going to be out through the late afternoon into the evening hours. And we are getting into the middle part of September, Scott. No sign of fall in the forecast. Temperatures Gee, thanks. <laughs> above average. Looks like next weekend, another round of some more showers and storms. But no cold fronts are headed to the deep south. Looks like as we even get into the start of the astronomical fall part, autumnal equinox. Well, I'm more worried. We had some rough stuff kind of pop up earlier today in, in varying spots, but all seems to be clear now, right? Yeah, it's all quiet now. That's what matters. Thanks for depressing me on no look at fall weather <laughs> yet. You know, we've been following pageant drama. You know, Nathan and I were cheering for our local lady here. She did pretty good. 60 WABD's Megan West, in fact, is in Atlantic City. And uh, we, she's been following Laura Lee Lewis on her journey. In fact, it's been crazy around here. Let's listen to some of the events from tonight. The 2017 Miss America fourth runner-up and the winner of an additional $10,000 scholarship is... Miss Mississippi, Laura Lee Lewis. Yes, real men watch pageants. So does Megan West. She's been back in Atlantic City covering the whole event for us. What a roller coaster, huh, Megan? can just make top five. I'll be completely happy. And we're she made top five. She sang her talent at stage at Miss America on national television. That's so exciting. Does not get any better. Just a little bit clip of Laura Lee. It's 
of my year. I love the organization, uh, and you, know, you guys are from Mississippi. Sam Haskell, of course, one of your own, is the CEO, and he's become a good friend of mine. And so I, I love what this organization represents. I love how it empowers women, how it educates women. Screaming for Miss Mississippi, by the way. There's a lot of fans for her. But I, I'm just in awe because sometimes women don't support each other, and it genuinely is real here, especially at that young age. Uh, we need more of it. I think these young women could teach some of us older women a lesson. Okay, so you just heard from Chris Harrison and Sage Steele, the host of the pageants tonight. As you can see, they knew that Miss Mississippi had quite a crowd in the house. And hey, we can see them and we can hear them tonight. And of course, you know, something else I got to point out to you, Gabby, I've been downplaying this the past couple days, but I know Miss Mississippi and her family pretty well. Her sister is my sister-in-law, so that means her brother-in-law is my brother, and, and Miss Mississippi's niece, Vivi, is right there, not even two years old. Yes! And it is what? It is 11 o'clock. I don't even know what time it is. And she is still going strong with pride and love for Miss Mississippi, Larley Lewis, fourth runner-up to Miss America. Scott, I can't believe it. Incredible night. She definitely rocked it on the, on the talent portion. I got to admit, Megan, good job. Hey, we're going to check back with you again a little later in the broadcast. Hey, coming up in sports, Mississippi State's Nick Fitzgerald talking about his one game in that big win over South Carolina. Stay right there. You're watching 16 WAPT News. Honestly, it's, it's been my dream since I was like six to be an SEC quarterback and to win an SEC football game. So, uh, I mean, I finally made my six-year-old my six self proud tonight. Now, for a guy who only attempted three passes in their season opener last weekend against South Alabama, Nick Fitzgerald proved himself Saturday night. After leaving the dogs to an opening drive score, he capitalized on his run game, finishing with 195 rushing yards, the most of any MSU quarterback. Now, let me break it down this way. Fitzgerald totaled 373 yards alone. South Carolina as a whole had 243. Well, I mean, I great blocking. Uh, people, people were throwing their bodies out there, and I was, I was following them. When you have a young player, you want to be able to run the football uh, back there. You know, you've got, you got to be able to run the football to be successful. It wasn't just Fitzgerald's run game that got MSU the win. The defense from the start proved to be too much to handle for USC. Uh, the move coming out was just like, you know, we were just ready to unleash on them. Because, you know, after you lose, you want to get that bad taste out of your mouth. So, you know, I think that would just got us juiced up and ready to go. Relentlessly getting after the ball. We were focused, dialed in, communicating. Uh, we had a lot of energy. Uh, on the field and off the field. We're very focused, dialed in, so. The Bulldogs will need that same energy going into this next week. They'll go on the road for the first time this season. Scott facing LSU in Death Valley. Big wins also. Southern Miss had a good weekend. Huge win, blowout win. And my so Rebels good for them. did well against And your Wofford. Rebels did well as well. They'll tell us more about that later. <laughs> <sighs> I'm joking. Coming up, hey, the Week in Review. We're going to be taking a look at some of the week's most shocking footage. You don't want to miss it. Hey, did you hear? Miss Mississippi made fourth alternate tonight in the 2017 Miss America pageant. 16 WABT's Megan West is in Atlantic City. Was the She's been following Laura Lee Lewis. We got to see Laura Lee compete in the swimsuit competition right after she was called to the top 15. We showed you this week how hard she worked to get ready for that competition. Take a look. Miss Mississippi, Laura Lee Lewis. Walking like that with Sierra, with Gabby Douglas, with Cole Swindell right in your face because I can't. What we have here with us tonight is the entire Team Laura Lee Miss Mississippi Woo! Fan Club. I mean, the, the thing is, they were without question the loudest fan club in the house. We talked to Laura Lee's mom, Lauren. I want to talk to her dad, Mark, right now. Mark, how are you feeling, sir? I'm excited beyond excited. What a thrill to have your daughter being top five in Miss America. I'm just... Uh, Tickle to death for people back home from parties and all across the state, even from other states. It's exciting to see all of the support. We're so thankful for all that. I ask you this. What were you thinking as each of those cuts were happening? 
Well, I just got a new pacemaker, and I think my new one is worn out because uh, it was going in high, high, high volume at the end. I, we were very nervous. Look, I can only imagine. Was there a highlight from tonight? I know it's tough to process because it just happened, but is there something that really jumps out to you as that's the moment I'm going to remember? I think her song. I think she just, I just leaned over to Lauren after she uh, sang. I said, I think she just nailed it because she was uh, pumped, and, and that's what she wanted to do from day one. I want to sing on national TV, and she got to do it, and I thought she did a very good job. I'm a little biased, but I thought she did a good job. I'm a little biased, too. We all thought she did a good job, right? Woo! Killed it. Killed it. In fact, <laughs> I'll tell you guys, I was I was keeping up with Twitter while I was inside Boardwalk Hall, and somebody said, Miss Mississippi, hashtag, nailed it. So I think people all across the country agree that she performed incredibly tonight, Scott. Yeah, me too. Got my hand up there. I thought she did great in talent. Thanks a lot, Megan. We'll check back with you a little later in the broadcast. But coming up, three state troopers crashed in three separate wrecks. One of those troopers fighting for his life tonight. Not tonight. Details coming up on that. Plus, Miss Mississippi makes it into the top ten. In fact, she made fourth alternate. We're live in Atlantic City with all the reaction. Stay right there.